In order to change, you actually have to plan a lot more. You have to spend more time planning and thinking versus reacting. Now, within the sales industry, one of the biggest challenges that most salespeople are faced is they're taught to just do, 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 do. Now, that's fine if it's working, but just doing something doesn't change something. Okay, so you need to become a bit more aware of what you're doing and what the responses are, what the change is. So what we want to do is we want to become really aware of changing our behaviors, they become better, and then they become automatic. Now, this is a continual thing. Um, automatic behaviors can be also likened to addiction behaviors, addictive behaviors, uh, such as uh, drinking, alcoholic uh, dr drugs. Also, alcohol <laughs> people who do a lot of shopping, Shopping alcoholics, um, you have people who line up at the Apple store at four o'clock in the morning for the newest iPhone. They're addicted to new technology. So automatic behaviors can be linked, uh, linked to also addictive behaviors. We want to become really, really aware of these behaviors. Now, the thing is, why do we want to become aware of behaviors? Behaviors are really important because they give an indication of the actions that you're actually taking. Now, why do we focus on behaviors? because the behavior is the one thing that you can control. People always get worked up about controlling life. Well, there's only one thing that you can actually control and that's what you think. Now, if you can think the right thoughts, you control your behaviors. Why do we focus on behaviors is also because you often have to wait longer for the result to happen. But the behavior is one thing that you have total control of. So that means um, if you do the right thing, the result will often occur. And placing too much emphasis on the end result can also create what we call undesirable behaviors, um, faking results, faking pipelines. Pipelines are more like pipe dreams. Now, one of the key things about understanding the differences between planned behavior and automatic behavior. Automatic behavior has to result in a good feeling immediately. This is the automatic gratification that many people have especially around training and development. Oh, give me the answer right now. Give me the magic line right now so I can actually get a result right now. Unfortunately, that's not how life works. Planned behavior has to result in a good feeling in the long term. So that means that you're paying your dues, you're getting there, you're moving. You're moving in the right direction. Now, these are really important aspects of understanding your own behavior because um, if you don't, um, you become a ha what I call a hostage to your automatic behaviors, to your habits. We're all creatures of habits. It all depends what is that habit that you are doing without any conscious awareness. So let me give you a very extreme example of a, a habit. Uh, planned behavior and automatic behavior. Manslaughter is a more automatic response to a situation, to a reactive situation. Premeditated murder is planned and is very, very intentional. So analyze your um, planned behaviors, the things that you are thinking consciously about. They are intention directed, they are conscious, and they are very deliberately controlled. Automatic behavior is situational directed and an unconscious and automatic and uncontrolled. It's like anger. Someone fires you off, you react. That is what we call automatic behavior. Now, emotions play an important aspect on both processes. Now, our conscious and what we call automatic reactions are aimed at getting a good feeling immediately. The people who can turn off that need for immediate gratification are the people that will evolve to a high level. That means they're willing to pay the price, to pay their dues, to get to the result. Now, one of the key things is I work with many, many salespeople and they have a, a very, uh, a huge desire to get the result real quick. Let me give you a, a dose of reality. Uh, I do a lot of work in the areas of sports psychology and if you look at any of the top people who get to the, to get to the pinnacle, Roger Federer didn't become Roger Federer at age 10, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18. He actually became what he became at age 22. Now think about the development he's done in those periods of times. You need to understand that to become a master takes application and dedication.